Anyway, so my name is Stephanie from Fast Track to Health Wellness Center, two offices in South Jersey, uh, where we do acupuncture and nutrition. So nutrition is my number one thing, as everybody knows. Um, very passionate about it. So one of the reasons I wanted to start this group was um, I've been talking to patients one-on-one -on -one about what I've been doing lately with weight loss tips and I just keep repeating myself over and over again. So starting the group is, will allow me to sort of, sort of share my knowledge and share and teach people uh, in a group setting so I can get the message across to a wider audience. Uh, at first I was just gonna put it for our current patients, um, but then I just decided to make it public for now and see what kind of response we get. And like I said, this week we had about 60 people join the group. So that's really great. Um, so what I've been doing is combining a couple of different things into one and that has brought me personally some weight loss results. So I, you know, I'm excited to share it with everybody else and hopefully get people on the same path. Um, in general, I've been eating like a low carb diet for quite a long time and that's a pretty good way to maintain and, and, and stay trim. But a lot of times what happens is you wind up eating more carbs than you're supposed to and then you, the weight creeps back on again. And that's sort of what happened with me. And next thing I knew, I was uh, I had an extra 20 pounds on me, didn't even realize it. So I, um, I started going strict low carb again, but I only got so far. So then, you know, I'm always learning and new things. And um, I wanted to combine keto, ketogenic diet with uh, intermittent fasting, two things that I've been learning a lot about. Um, so, Keto I've experimented with before when I was doing just keto alone without the fasting, it wasn't, it was good, but it wasn't great. But when I added the fasting to it, it made it 10 times better. Um, so before I get into the steps that we need to take to do all this, I want to go over some basic concepts. Um, let's talk about macronutrients macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. So these are the three. So probably everybody knows what carbs are, but I just want to go through it really quick so people know. Carbs are basically fruit, vegetables, starches, grains, uh, sugar, refined sugar. That all falls in the category of carbohydrates. And then we have protein, and um, that's basically meat, eggs, fish, chicken, um, and when I'm, when I'm referring to protein, I'm referring to animal protein. I know there's other types of protein, um, but when I'm going to be talking about protein, it's going to be referring to animal protein. And then the last category is fats, and uh, that's things like different oils, um, avocados, nuts, and seeds. Uh, there's fat in animal products, like in dairy products, in meat, there's fats in there too. So these are the basic macronutrients. So getting the right percentages of the macronutrients is a big piece of this. It's not everything, but it's a big piece of it. So uh, with the first part, we need to talk about how many of each are we going to have, because that's really important. Um, Initially, in order to become adapted to fat burning instead of sugar burning, you need to reduce your intake of carbohydrates. So one of the purposes of doing the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting is to change from a sugar burning metabolism to a fat burning metabolism. And this doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. So the first step you have to do is reduce the amount of carbohydrates in your diet so that your body will start to use your own body fat for fuel. Um, but that takes a while. It could take a couple of weeks, actually. Um, so if you continue to eat carbohydrates over a certain amount, your body will just continue to you know, use the carbohydrates as your source of fuel. So that's why we need uh, lower carbohydrates 
Um, and in some cases, we need to add extra fat. Um, some people are afraid of fat. They'd be eating a low-fat diet. So if that's the case, you would need to increase the amount of healthy fats in your diet. But, you know, there are people that are already getting enough fat and they really just need to reduce the amount of carbohydrates that they're eating. So that's the, the, one of the basic mechanisms is to get into fat burning instead of sugar burning. You have to reduce the amount of sugar and starches that you eat and make sure that you're incre either increasing your fat or getting enough fat already in your diet. Now, as far as protein goes, I would put that in the moderate category. So you have to get enough, but you don't want to overdo it with protein either because the body can use protein and turn it into glucose as well. So we want to have a moderate amount of protein. That's going to vary from person to person as to how much you actually need. It's going to depend on your physical activity, your you know, male or female. So how much protein you need is different for everybody. Okay, so step one, if you're eating the standard American diet, first and foremost, like if you're eating junk food, you're eating fast food and processed food, that's the first thing you have to change. You can't become a fat, you know, fat burner if you're eating junk. So that's step one. Um, hopefully most of you are already there with this and are not eating the standard American diet, but if you are, this is gonna be like a long process for you to get to where you need to go. Um, so hopefully you're already eating real food and not a lot of junk. So if you're eating junk, that's the first thing you have to do is just cut all of that out. Okay, then the next thing you, do, you need to do is you know, stick to real whole foods and reduce your carbohydrate consumption and uh, possibly increase your fats depending on if you're eating enough or not. Okay, so that's step one. Um, now, now let's talk about food timing. So this is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting means that you're eating during a certain period of time and then you're fasting during a certain period of time. So when you're fasting, you're not eating anything. You're, you're, you're allowed to drink liquids, some liquids, but you're not eating any food. So it's basically a time restricted eating period. Um, there's different ways to do it depending on your schedule, depending on your energy level. Some people like to skip breakfast and just eat, say, lunch and dinner and eat between like a range of like 12 to 8. And then other people prefer to skip dinner and eat like in the morning and then at lunchtime and then wait until the following day at breakfast. So that's totally up to you, you know, how, you know, you want to do that. It's different for everybody. Um, but basically you're going to choose a period of time where you're going to eat. Now in the beginning, if you're eating, say, six meals, a day, uh, six small meals a day, or three meals and snacks, you're gonna, you're, gonna need, you're gonna need to do this gradually. First thing you need to do if you're eating six times a day, get rid of the snacks. That's the first thing, and then focus on sticking with three meals. Make sure you're eating enough at every meal that you can get from one meal to the next. Okay, so that's step one. Uh, and then once you're eating three meals a day. Now you're going to want to decide, are we going to get rid of breakfast? Are we going to get rid of dinner? How are we going to restrict the period of eating? So once you make that decision, if you think it would be hard to just take out the meal, then just gradually move the time. So if you're going to take out breakfast and you normally eat at 8, just keep moving your breakfast later and later. So 9, 10, 11, until you get closer to lunch and then you get used to it and then it's gone. Okay. Um, any questions so far? I, I, I have a lot to cover and um, I just want to make sure that there aren't any questions so far. But if there are, please let me know what your questions are. Any questions about the macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats? If you guys let me know, any questions? Do we understand what carbs, proteins, and fats are and what they mean? Yes? Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so next, the next part of this equation is calories. So if the goal is to lose weight, which it is for obviously many people, um, there has to be some degree of calorie restriction. However, if you're eating in a time restricted period, most of the time your calories are going to be restricted because you're basically taking out one meal. Now, it is possible, however, to overeat during that window. So if you somehow are able to just like 
take the same volume of food and just stick it into two meals or whatever, it's going to be, you know, the same amount of calories, but it is actually a little bit easier when you do it that way. But yeah, to some degree, if you want to lose weight, you have to have some degree of, of calorie restriction. And like I said, that's generally accomplished by just taking out one of the meals. Now in the beginning, if you're not used to this, it may seem hard and it might take time for your body to get used to that, especially if you've been eating this way for a long time. Um, so you might go through all kinds of changes. First of all, if you're, if you're just starting out and just cutting carbs alone, you're gonna go through withdrawal for sure. If you've been used to burning sugar and eating every couple of hours, you're gonna have a, a pretty hard time in the beginning, but it will pass. You just have to get through that part. Um, but trust me, once you've, you're beyond that and you get to the, to the point where you're doing the intermittent fasting, everything is gonna get better. So it's, it's worth it. The benefits of doing the intermittent fasting far outweigh the beginning part where you're gonna have challenges. So I know one of the questions prior to the call was, what are the benefits of doing the intermittent fasting? The, well, one of the main ones obviously is weight loss. That's why we started this group. But another benefit is when you're not eating, so that during that period where you're fasting, your body is going into something called autophagy where it's repairing itself, it's repairing its cells. So it's a very therapeutic thing to do. Now, the longer you fast, the better the benefits of autophagy are. So in a restricted time period of like say, eating window eight hours and fasting 16 hours, you're gonna get some benefits of autophagy, but the, the main benefits go beyond that. But we're not, that's not the scope of the call today. But I just wanted to say that Beyond just weight loss, there are benefits of fasting and intermittent fasting. So it's, it's a good thing to do. And just remember, you're not gonna die if you don't eat, okay? Most of us have enough reserves on our body to go a long time without eating. But in, in any case, we're starting out with just doing the intermittent parts, okay? Any questions about the um, cutting the, the meals back and eating in a shorter time period? Any questions about the that part so far? Everybody's clear on that? If you just joined the call, hi, welcome. We just discussed what carbs, protein, and fat are. And we said how you need to, in order to become a fat burner and not a sugar burner, you need to reduce your carbohydrate intake. Now, one other thing I wanna say about that because carbohydrates include some good things as well. Obviously, vegetables are good. So we're not really restricting vegetables. So to keep this simple, when we say cutting carbs, we mean pretty much everything except for vegetables. So any kind of green vegetable is gonna be okay. You might wanna stay away from starchier ones, um, but the, anything that's in the green family and cruciferous like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, all fine. With the intermittent fasting, how do you receive nutrients? Okay, you have nutrients stored, good question. You, have, you already have storage in your body of nutrients, okay? Um, be careful with potatoes and beans. Yes, so when I'm saying low carb, I just mean in the beginning. In order to get into ketosis and get into fat burning mode, it is a process that takes some time, so the carbs have to be restricted. But it doesn't mean that you're never going to eat carbs ever again. So there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel, um, but that's more for people who are already hitting their goals. Or uh, some people need to add some carbs in here and there if they have certain health conditions. But for most people, the beginning part is going to be very low carb. Now as far as how much that looks like, as far as say grams, that's going to vary. but it's approximately 50 grams or less of carbs per day. And like I said, vegetables don't count. So that means you wanna limit your fruit. Forget about starches because they're gonna be super high in carbs. The lower you can get it in the beginning, the faster this is gonna work. So just you know, keep in mind that the quicker you can lower the carbs, the better. I, uh, I just answered that one. It's a, approximately 50 grams, but it's gonna vary. Once you're in fat burning mode, um, you might actually still be in ketosis when you have more than 50 grams of carbs per day. So there are people who are fat adapted, meaning that they, 
They um, are very efficient at going between uh, fat burning and glucose burning, and they'll be able to stay in ketosis by having more carbs than 50 grams, but that's later on down the line. And in some cases, especially with women, they might have to reduce the carbs initially really, really low in order to get into fat burning mode. Now, I don't encourage you to start testing your, your, your ketones. Ketones are the fuel that the body uses when it's burning fat. That's a very technical way to see if you're in ketosis or not, but it's really not necessary. You can just go by how you feel. So once you get over the hump and you think you're now burning fat instead of carbs, you're gonna feel different. You're gonna be able to skip meals and you're not gonna be hungry as much. You're gonna lose your sugar cravings. Your mental clarity and focus is gonna get a lot better. You're gonna really feel a difference in your brain. I know for me, that was one of the biggest benefits was I didn't have any more of these ups and downs from eating and not eating. It was just this mental clarity that just stayed with me all the time. That's when I knew that I was definitely burning more fat than, than sugar. But I never really was into testing uh, the ketones, but there are plenty of ways that you can do that. The urine strips are the cheapest way, but they're not the most accurate way. Then you have a breath test and then you have a blood test, but those tests are pretty expensive. And like I said, it's really not necessary in the beginning. Um, signs that you're in ketosis, like I said, you lose, you lose the hunger pangs. Um, you're not craving carbs anymore. You're craving more fattier foods. And your energy is really steady. Um, so that's, those are some of the signs. And like I said, the mental clarity. I don't know if that came in before or after I just listed all those things. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's going to take time to get into fat burning mode. Um, and the good news is once you're there, it's not like you have to stay in ketosis all the time. Um, at some point, you're just going to cycle in and cycle out of ketosis. I mean, there are some people out there that say you should be in ketosis all the time. Maybe that works for some people, but I don't think for most people it's necessary or even beneficial to be in ketosis all the time. I think as humans, we've evolved to adapt to different ways of eating and different time periods of eating and different sources of food. So I think it's better that we're able to have flexibility with our metabolism and be able to go in and out of ketosis. Um, and then, like I said, carbohydrates can be beneficial sometimes not the junky carbs like sugar but you know root vegetables and starches do have benefits so at some point you will be able to add those in to your diet here and there and it will stimulate your your hormones actually to work better it's actually beneficial for the thyroid when you do have some carbs here and there but here's the thing most people overall in general are insulin resistant and eating too many carbs and have weight issues and blood sugar issues. That's the majority of people. So the information I'm providing you today is for, you know, people just starting out. This is not for people who've been doing this for a long time, who are weightlifters and already really lean. This information is for people who are eating a lot of carbs, have weight on them, have blood sugar issues. There, there's too many in their diet, okay? So don't be thinking about when am I gonna have carbs next? Just be thinking about how am I gonna get them out of my diet for now so we can become a, a fat burner instead of a sugar burner. Okay, um, so there's, there might be some side effects. Like I said, you might go through some detox symptoms. First of all, when you're cutting the sugar, um, you might not feel great in the beginning until you've switched over to fat burning. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of water. So. That's one of the first signs when you're dropping carbs. You lose a lot of water, which means you're losing electrolytes. So this is really, really important. One thing I really want you to take away from today is that you have to replenish your electrolytes, especially when you're fasting, okay? And even when you're just dropping the carbs. Electrolytes, I mostly am talking about salt, okay? Sea salt is what I recommend that you try using. So if you're going through withdrawal symptoms or you're going through uh, headaches, weakness, dizziness, that kind of stuff, Add some sea salt to some water and get it down, okay? Or just make a bottle of a little bit of salty water and just sip it because your body's gonna need extra electrolytes as you're losing the water and as you're adjusting, okay, to fat burning and to ketosis. Um, and um, let's see. If this is really difficult for you in the beginning, the, the fasting part, 
you don't necessarily have to start out by doing it every day. You can say pick three days a week where you're going to do the intermittent fasting and you know shorten up that window and then the other days maybe you go back to eating three times a day and then just try to get used to it. I mean the goal is to do it most of the time until you reach your weight loss goals and then you have to figure out where your maintenance level is. That's We'll do that in another in another um, episode because that's just too much information. I really want to give you guys like the basics, the starting point where you can start doing something right away, okay? So let's take it back to the beginning because people are all at different places in, in their eating right now. Some people are eating six times a day and some people are only eating once or twice. So the first step is if you're eating six times a day, get rid of the snacks and start with three meals. When you're able to do three meals a day, then you're gonna gradually go down to two and decide which time period is gonna be best for you. Breakfast, lunch, lunch, dinner, doesn't really matter. It's completely flexible, okay? And then what you're eating is also important. So if you're eating the standard American diet, first thing you need to do is cut out the junk, cut out the processed foods, cut out the fast foods, cut out the soda, cut out the sugar, okay? And then the starches and the grains, all right? and uh, trans fats, processed fats, veg you know, the only vegetable oils you want to get are like olive oil, avocado oil. You want to use better fats, olive oil, um, coconut oil, avocado oil, even lard and butter and things like that are totally safe. All right. So those are the basics. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? Other than the ones I just answered. So we are cutting back on carbs, possibly increasing our fats, okay? So that we can eventually go from eating multiple times per day to a couple times per day. No questions? No questions? Should I get into some a little bit more advanced? Anybody here already doing this and needs like what, go, what comes after that? Or they're doing this and it's not working? Is anybody doing this already, eating like twice a day, intermittent fasting, eating low carb, higher fat, already in ketosis? Any dangers to eliminating foods? What do you mean by eliminating foods? You mean like completely or, I mean the bulk of your diet is going to be protein and vegetables and healthy fats. So there's really no danger in that. If you're eliminating sugars and starches and things like that for the most part, it's actually a really good thing. So what do you mean by dangers to eliminating foods? Do you mean as far as the fasting part goes, or do you mean like certain food groups for long periods of time? Okay, so what the goal is here is to use fat as our fuel source. Okay, so we want our body to start burning our own fat. So that's sort of why, one of the reasons that we're doing this. So fasting will encourage the body to do that over time. So honestly, if you have a lot of weight on you, you don't really need to eat at all. Now that's not the focus of today's talk. We're gonna talk about that another time, but it's true. If you have a lot of weight on you, hi Cheryl, you don't really need to eat much, okay? In general, you go long periods of time fasting and just have your electrolytes, okay? But like I said, I'd rather talk about prolonged fasting in another episode. I wanted to just give the basics Tonight, uh, let's see, doing this way of eating for about two weeks, feel great, and a month, six, all right, have fast as long as 36 hours. All right, so we have people already doing this. Fast as long as 36 hours, no, no issues. Yeah, that's the thing, like you really start to feel different. It's not just about the weight loss. And I wouldn't focus so much on the scale. Go by how your clothes fit, go by how you feel, because water levels are going to shift around your cycle if you're a female how much water you're drinking how much you're working out so you can't always go by the scale go by your clothes go by how you feel i find that drinking sparkling water curbs appetite and black coffee yeah so there's definitely some good things that you can drink uh, during the time when you're not eating 
Um, a lot of people like to do green tea and coffee. Uh, but you have to do those kinds of things without any cream or anything during the period where you're not eating. So let's say you're doing um, intermittent fasting and you're eating only at lunch and dinner. Um, then in the morning, you're just drinking fluids. You're just drinking your electrolyte water or your, your black coffee or your green tea. You can even use apple cider vinegar or some lemon juice. Those are really excellent too to add to your drinks. Um, someone here just mentioned they, they use sparkling water to help with the appetite. Uh, the, as far as the hunger goes, it does get easier over time. Um, and in the beginning, when you have a lot of weight on you, the, the hunger really goes away quite a bit because your body's feeding off of itself. It's using its own fuel. When you start getting leaner, it gets a little bit harder. I know in the beginning for me, it was a lot easier. I wasn't really as hungry. But now as I'm getting really close to my goal, I only have a few pounds left that I want to lose. And it's mostly just like probably stuff I need to do with, with working out. It's getting a little bit harder to, you know, the hunger is there, I should say. And here's another thing for females, you will notice that this is more difficult to do around your period, okay? So that's just a hormonal thing. Uh, Steph said berries are best in the beginning. Yeah, so fruit-wise, you yes, low glycemic fruits are the best if you're gonna do any carbs, but make sure you count them. Uh, they have to be low in carbs. So uh, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries are, are good options. Are there any good apps to help? Ah, thank you, thank you. I wanted to mention that, thanks, Jolene. There's an app that we use in the clinic called Lose It, just like it sounds, L-O-S-E-I-T. Uh, download that app and you can track your food and it will tell you your macros and it'll give you a nice little pie chart, which is awesome. It'll tell you how many grams of carbs, how many grams of fat and protein, and even your fiber. So it's an excellent app and it's a really good way to make sure you're not overeating the carbs. I mean, if you basically just stick to meat, fish, chicken, and vegetables as the bulk of your food, you should be okay and not have to worry about counting carbs. But, you know, some people are eating other things and they need to really track it. But if you try to just stick uh, with that as your basic meal, it will be easier. Not positive though. What's not positive, Kel? Um, Anyway, um, yeah, so if you're hitting a plateau, you need to look at your macros. Um, and, and then if you're doing two meals a day and that's not working, you might wanna consider making your fasting period even longer. So you might wanna go from 16, eight, meaning 16 hours fasting and eight hours eating. You might wanna move that up to say 20. So then you shorten your period of eating into a four hour window. Okay, that's a more advanced strategy. But if you're already doing this and it's not helping, you, then you wanna just make the period of time that you're eating even smaller. Uh, not positive about the fruits, but you confirmed. Okay, yes, so that's the basics. Um, so the next video that's gonna be coming out I'm going to cover everything that I just covered here for the most part. So please keep an eye out for that, that next video. And I will be posting videos about once a week. Uh, so please look out for those. They're gonna be posted in the Facebook group. And I have somebody trying to break in. <laughs> Can you please out, please? Uh, thank you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm totally distracted now. What percentage calorie deficit should it shoot for? Percentage calorie deficit. Well, I don't know about percentage wise, but if you're using the Lose It app, which is great, you can put in there what your goal weight is and it will tell you um, what your max calories needs to be that day to reach your goal weight. So that can give you an indication of if you're overdoing with the calorie part. So I would say check out the app and you know look at the calories and make sure you're staying within that range. Um, but the good news is, like I said, you're because people think, oh, I'm eating less, I'm going to be hungry. But with the fasting and eating more fat, that's the thing about fat. It keeps you full longer compared to carbs. Carbs are going to make you want to eat all the time. 
and they cause more cravings. So becoming a fat burner instead of a sugar burner is really the underlying thing here. And that's sort of what makes everything work. So keto alone is great, fasting alone is great, but when you combine the two together, that's when the real magic starts. That's why I've been so excited about this, this whole concept of, of doing it all together. Uh, like I said, I was doing low carb for a long time that, you know, that goes up and down. But when you do that with the keto, meaning more fat, less carbs, and then the intermittent fasting on top of that, it's a great, great combination. No, Carol, it wasn't the kitties this time. They don't know how to open doors. <laughs> Nighttime for lives, please. Yes, um, I'm gonna try to do the lives uh, on Sunday nights. I figure that's probably a night that people are not out and about. What do you guys think? Sunday night's good for most of you? I'll, po I'll post something in the, in the group about it uh, to see what's a good time for people. But evenings obviously are gonna be better for most, most everybody. So I'll shoot for maybe a Sunday or a weekday. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. And like I said, the videos are gonna be coming out weekly. So look out for them. And here's another thing, I beg you, please. If you watch my videos on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I keep asking and asking and asking and asking and people watch the videos, but they don't subscribe. It doesn't mean anything. You're not gonna get spammed. Nothing's gonna happen to you. It just means that YouTube will see that people like my channel and then the videos will start getting shown to more people in more places and my channel will grow. So please subscribe if you do watch my videos on YouTube. I would appreciate it. Um, so anybody that's just joining in, we covered a lot of material already. So let me take some, some more questions uh, right now from anybody that just came in a little bit late that doesn't know where we're at in, in this um, process. Um, I'll go over the everything again. So we are reducing the amount of carbohydrates that we eat except for vegetables. Okay, we're, we're taking out sugar, we're taking out starches. Uh, and we're gonna eat protein from animal products, and we're gonna make sure we're getting enough healthy fats, okay? And we're gonna try to keep our carbs below 50 grams per day until we get fat adapted, get to the point where we're burning fat as our fuel source instead of glucose. That's a process, takes a couple of weeks, sometimes less, okay? Then when we get to that point where we're you know, eating less carbs, we can get from meal to meal without being hungry, then you're going to want to try doing time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting. So that means you could either skip breakfast and then just eat between lunch and dinner, or you can skip dinner and eat between breakfast and lunch. This period of time when you're not eating is the fasting time. You're not eating any food, you're just drinking liquids. So this is going to allow your body to eventually burn more fat as it's fuel during that time. And it's also going to allow your body to recycle its cells and repair itself during this time period. It's also called uh, something called autophagy. So that's the body eating itself and repairing itself. Can I take supplements while fasting? Yes, you can take supplements in general, but you don't want to take them during the period of time that you're actually not eating. So wait until you're breaking your fast and having your lunch or your dinner and take your supplements then. Um, because to make the fast the most efficient, you don't want to eat anything, including a supplement, that's going to stimulate any digestive processes, okay? So basically you just want to stick to your water, your electrolytes, um, your coffee or tea with no cream or sugar, and some app or maybe apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, and things like that. Um, so that's, that's the deal with the supplements. Uh, and don't forget, really, really important are, is the electrolytes. So when you're switching over from carb, sugar burning to fat burning, you're going to lose a lot of water. That means you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes. So you have to stay hydrated and you have to add sea salt to your water. And if you're feeling the effects of detoxing from carbs, that's sometimes called the keto flu, you need to drink some salt in your water. Put some sea salt, Celtic sea salt, pink sea salt, any of that. That's the key to not feeling bad. It's so critical. Can you take medications during fasting? Depends, it depends on the medication. Uh, thyroid medication in the morning is not a problem. 
Um, if you're taking regular meds, it's probably okay. You might want to take them, uh, it depends on what the med is, uh, but you might want to take them during the period of time when you're eating, I would say, unless you have to take it at certain times of the day. It's probably not going to make that much of a difference with that. Gum actually is not okay. I'm sorry, Kelly. Um, gum actually breaks the fast. I mean, some doctors will tell you that's not true, but other people say that it is true. So I would say no on the gum. Working out during fasting. Yes, yes, yes. Working out during fasting is actually really good because you're gonna, it's gonna help you deplete your glycogen. Glycogen is the stored sugar that, that gets stored in your, in your liver. That's a, uh, where you're getting a lot of your fuel from when you're burning sugar. So exercise helps deplete your glycogen from your liver faster, so then your body has to resort to burning fat. So exercise is actually a really good thing to do while you're fasting. Let's see, Eric, I work out every day and I currently fast 16, 17 hours. Yeah, yeah, so she's, she's an animal, that one. <laughs> but um, working out is gonna make everything better. Um, obviously, you're not going to want to work out if you're weak and you're not feeling good. Wait until that all passes. But once you're starting to feel good and your energy's coming back and your brain is, is focused and working, make sure you are working out. Um, you know, so if you work out in the morning, you know, that's, that's a great time because then you can really deplete your, your stores of glycogen and then you'll have your, your food later on during the day. Would you recommend skipping breakfast or dinner? That's completely up to you. I, I think... If you skip dinner, you're probably going to be able to get a little bit more of a faster weight loss um, because, you know, lunchtime is sort of like the highest point of the circadian rhythm when you're burning calories the most efficiently. Um, but then there's others that say that if you have a dinner, you're going to sleep better. So I would say experiment with it. Try both. See which one works better for you. Um, depending maybe what time you get up. If you get up at 3, 4 in the morning, it might be easier for you to do breakfast and lunch, or it might not be. So I think that's totally up to you how you do that. I would say try both and see which one works better. Doesn't anything that triggers digestion stop the fasting process? Yeah, for the most part, yes, Joy, but not everything. Um, because other things sort of enhance the um, autophagy um, so it, it, like the apple cider vinegar is not a bad thing to have. A little bit of lemon juice is not a bad thing to have. Um, even, you know, with the coffee and tea, like that's controversial. Uh, most people think, uh, it's okay to have that, but other people think that anything, like I've heard experts say that anything that, you know, you have to put into your body other than water is going to stop the fasting. So it's a little controversial, but you know, the caffeine does have other benefits uh, for burning some extra calories. So, you know, most people are going to stick with that. So it depends on what the what, what it is that you're that you're having. Um, let's see if I, if I skip dinner, I can't sleep. Well. Yeah. So I'm I'm for personally doing that as well. I'm doing lunch and dinner, skipping breakfast, and I I, I feel that that helps me sleep better too. Um, but then again, I I haven't tried. Honestly, I haven't tried doing the breakfast and lunch and skipping the dinner yet. I, I do want to try that because sometimes I eat such a big lunch that I don't even not even hungry for dinner. So I'm curious to see how I do with just breakfast and lunch, but I still haven't done that yet. But yeah, for a lot of people, that's going to help them sleep better when they have a nice dinner. Uh, gum, yeah. I'm going to say no on the gum, Joy. I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to do the gum when you're, when you're you know not eating. So... Sorry about that. I know everybody wants to be able to chew gum, but I don't think that's going to be a good thing to do. Um, the, the electrolyte water is going to be the most important thing that you could do. I know I've said it many times already, but it's so critical. And I know for me, it's, it's on the days that I'm feeling really hungry or just not enough energy or whatever it is, I, I reach for my salt and it just like brings me back to life and I, I absolutely love it. And don't be afraid of salt and everybody's afraid of salt and we've heard for all these years that salt's bad for us and all this nonsense, but we need salt. It's an electrolyte. It's critical for our health. It's critical when you're losing water. Keto breath. Oh, keto breath. <laughs> Is that why you're asking about the gum? <laughs> 
Uh, should salt water be cold, room temperature, or warm? Yeah, ideally, you know, you want it to be like room temperature, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I've ever tried uh, Benefiber supplements. I got the powder packets and I got the water, no flavor. When you say, does it work? Do you mean as far as being a good fiber source and helping you go to the bathroom or, or what do you mean by that? I personally have never tried that particular brand. Um, I mean, if you need fiber, then you know, you should use it during the period that you are eating. Ideally you want to get it from carbohydrates, but if that's a nice soluble fiber, which I think it is, I did look it up. It should be okay. I don't think it should be a problem. What's the best type of food to eat when refeeding after a long fast? Yes, protein and fats. Yeah, uh, but you can eat uh, vegetables too. So let's say you're doing a longer fast. Or when you say longer fast, you mean more than 24 hours? Or what do you mean exactly? Um, yeah, but basically if, you're, if you want to continue to lose weight when you eat again, you want to continue to keep the carbs low. Eventually when you get to a point where you're lean, then I encourage you to add carbs in here and there through, throughout your week in your evening meal, but not really until you get to that point. Uh, let's see here. Yes, yes, I talked to clients in there. Oh, you mean the, um, the keto breath? Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure about that one. <laughs> I guess, um, I know that's why you're asking about the gum. I wonder if lemon juice would help with that or maybe apple cider vinegar. That might help with it too. I'm not really sure. Maybe green tea would even help with it. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. So let me do another review. Yeah, you can, peppermint oil might work. I, I don't think that's going to break your fast to do one little drop of peppermint oil, essential oil. So the people who've just joined in or joined in recently, uh, we covered a lot of material. Basically what we're doing is we're combining low carb with keto, ketogenic diet, which means a higher amount of fat, lower amount of carbs, moderate amount of protein with intermittent fasting, which is restricting the time period when you are actually eating and fasting for the rest of the time. So that's what we have been talking about. Uh, I have another video coming out uh, this week that will go into detail about all of these things. I wanted to bring it into the group in, a, in this kind of uh, format so that it will be recorded and people can watch it and you know, I can answer your questions. But going forward, I want you guys to participate and let me know what you're doing and if it's working for you and any questions that come up or any challenges that you have uh, with all this. Me and Donna will answer your questions anytime you post them. And I'm sure things are going to come up as time goes on. I'm going to continue doing videos on these topics and I'll try to answer your questions both in the lives and in the, uh, in the videos. So let's see, coconut oil, what it would help with the breath issues. Yeah, it would, um, I guess if you're, yeah, doing it when you're not uh, actually fasting. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea, the coconut oil. Clove between my cheek. Yep, yeah, clove, that would work. You guys have a lot of great ideas. That's a good help. Uh, let's see here. So we are not eating junk food. We're not eating the standard American diet. We are cutting back on carbohydrates, but not vegetables. Vegetables are okay. Green vegetables are fine, but we're cutting back on everything else in the carb department. We're going to make sure we have enough fats, healthy fats in our diet. Uh, I don't want you to go overboard on the fat department unless you really have been eating low fat for a long time. Um, and then moderate amount of protein, and that's going to vary from person to person. Um, if you're working out, you need more. If you're over 50, you need more. So don't skimp on the protein. But then again, don't go overboard on it either. And then no more eating six times a day. Stop eating snacks. First step, try to go to three meals a day. Once you got that handled, then you're going to go to two meals a day. And then if you want to keep going, you're going to go to either one meal a day or a very short period of eating, like a four hour window. We're definitely going to talk about more advanced strategies in uh, upcoming lives uh, and get more into the prolonged types of fasts. But look, these concepts right here that we just discussed 
are going to help the majority of people. Most people are going to benefit from this. Is it going to be easy? Not always. There's going to be there's going to be some things that are hard. There's going to be challenges. If you're used to eating sugar and you're a sugar burner, you're not going to automatically just become a fat burner. It takes time. If you're used to eating three meals a day and now you're cutting back to two meals a day, and then that's what happened with me, uh, I had to keep pushing my breakfast back further and further. First it was at seven, then it was nine, and then 10. And then as I got to 11, I finally was able to just go to lunch. But it took me, I think, about a week to be able to do that. So it, it, it's gonna vary. Everybody's different. Um, but just keep in mind, you're not going to die if you don't eat, okay? And salt is good for you, and fat doesn't make you fat. Those are the things I want you to remember. All right, let's see here. All right, guys, uh, it's going on 9 o'clock. I know it's getting late. I'm so sorry um, that I didn't get, you know, some people joined late. We didn't get everything in with you. But you can always watch the replay of this. What I like about fasting is that it works amazingly and it's not a diet. Yes, that's, that's a good point. This is not a diet. We're not dieting. And yes, there has to be some kind of a calorie restriction or deficit, I should say. But I don't want you to worry so much about numbers and all that kind of stuff. I want you to just sort of make this more of a lifestyle. And it's flexible. You can change it up. You can fast on certain days and not fast on other days. Um, so it's going to be a very flexible way to live. It's not rigid. If you mess up, you could always get back on track and then you can fast longer. Um, so there's a lot more coming. And yes, and you feel amazing. Yes, that's the, one of the main benefits. It's not just for weight loss. The mental clarity that you get from not being a sugar burner anymore, when your body is running more on fat, it really, really makes a difference in how your brain feels. Uh, I'm eating one meal per day. How many calories? Well, it depends if you're trying to continue to lose weight or you're trying to maintain. So if you're trying to maintain your weight, go on the Lose It app and put in your weight and it'll tell you how many calories you need to have to maintain that weight. If you're trying to lose weight, put in your goal weight and the app will tell you the max of calories that you should be eating for the day. So that should help, okay? Um, so yeah, if you want to continue to lose weight and you're not there yet, you will have to continue to have a slight caloric deficit over time, okay? And the fasting really helps with that because the fasting will help you burn more fat than just eating throughout the day, okay? Because every time we stimulate insulin by eating, it's not making us burn fat, okay? When you were talking about salt, not iodized. Yes, sea salt. When I say salt, I never mean iodized salt. I mean sea salt. My favorite is the Celtic gray salt. Um, pink salt is good too, the Himalayan is fine, but I personally like the Celtic salt. So these are the basics, you guys. Um, I'll take one more question, otherwise I'm going to get going because it's getting late. And um, like I said, um, I'm going to put in the, in the poll there, find out which days are good for you guys for the lives. I think I'm going to try Sunday nights, I think that might work. And the videos will be out once a week. Please comment, please share. Um, if, you, if you watch my YouTube videos, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that because we need this message to get out to more people. So YouTube takes notice of whether or not people are subscribing to the channel. Um, any other questions, you guys? This was fun. I liked it. Did you guys like it? Yes. Did I cover a lot of material? Thank you. All right, guys. There's no more questions then. I hope a lot of this sank in. The next video will give you a nice summary of all this. Yay. Hi. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you guys being here. And um, we'll, we'll keep doing more of these. And look out for my videos. And I really appreciate you guys being here. And I want to spread the word, educate people and you know get everybody healthier that's my goal all right guys thank you so much i really appreciate it i'll see you either on the next live or at the clinic all right guys have a great night bye